This is issue two of Day of Vegans. Uh, this is a crossover, a big event crossover. It is not very good. I'm not a fan. It made Spectre into a baddie. And this morning, this morning, I did issue one. And there is actually a tie-in or two that are meant to take place in between them. But I'll do them whenever I feel like it. Uh, I probably won't get around to issue three for a while anyway. First up, we've got this cover, and it's, I would say, it's a good cover for an issue of the Spectre's comic. It is, however, an awful cover for this comic and a crossover event. This crossover is filled with all sorts of interesting and visually exciting characters, so why are you wasting a cover only spotlighting one of them? Furthermore, this sequence here with the man the victim being tortured by the birds. This is a flashback in the comic. It isn't part of the main story. So why are you representing that on the cover? Anyway, we start off with that flashback. The Spectre, at the minute, he does not have a human host. And I've just realised I said I was going to do a comic. I was going to review a comic that had its origin in it. But I have forgotten to. Uh, the Spectre, he doesn't have a human horse, so he has, like, no moral compass. So he is just judging everyone who does anything slightly wrong as being guilty and exacting vengeance upon them. Like, the woman here, she is having an affair, so she gets punished. There's this kid here, she stores... He stole some pennies from his mom and dad, so he gets punished. There's this girl here, disrespectful to her dad, so she gets punished. And then what happens is, this woman, from the start of the first issue, we, were, we weren't told her name, but here, she is called Calypso. She is, uh, like, Lady Macbethel to Spectre, and she is telling Spectre how to go about using his powers and exacting vengeance on people, and here she says, oh, why don't you not go to the root of all evil? Magic! And that is the whole setup for the crossover, and why Spectre is suddenly evil and trying to kill anyone related to magic. And we've got this scene here, which probably confused a lot of people, because Enchantress... Uh, from Suicide Squad's Cara Delevingne. Uh, for start, she looks much, much prettier here. Like, I really fancy her. She looked nothing like this in the film. Like, if she looked like this, if she looked this good in the film, it would be much better. Uh, I fancy her a lot. Uh, she is using magic to, like, relate to see this flashback. Uh, and she's telling the other heroes about it. And it has her saying the lines that Calypso was saying here. So if you didn't know these characters, you would actually think that this scene is trying to tell you that her and Calypso are the same person. It's just, it's just really bad storytelling, that. And then we have got this here. This is the team that the crossover features. They're called the Shady Pact. And the problem is they were set up very badly in the first issue. Other than Enchantress and Reggae Man and Detective Chimp, who was there, uh, we weren't told who else was joining them in the fight against the Spectre. So we have virtually no setup for Blue Demon, Nightman, or Nightsides. And in fact, I don't think Nightsides was even in the first issue. If she was, she was just in the background. She definitely didn't have a line. And then, basically, we, we see them talking a bit, and then we get this. This is another flashback showing the Spectre fighting Phantom Strangers. And out of context, this image is really good. I like it. It's a good image of them fighting. So if you like, you just remove Calypso there. This is a good image. I like it. And then, uh, on the next page, we have got something a bit shitter, which is Spectre fighting Dr. Fates, except Dr. Fates, he only gets a page and a half, and it makes him look really, really rubbish, and then there's Madame Xanadu there, and she, she gets like a quarter of a page, like, and there's tarot cards, so that makes this comic automatically awful, uh, right, and then we've got we get back to the Shady Pact here, and what's happening is the Enchantress takes 
uh, reggae man aside and says, "Oh, if I get if I get out of control, you will have to kill me." And uh, reggae man he misreads the signals and thinks that the that she's into him, so he kisses her and it's embarrassing. And then this bit annoys me right here. We ended the first issue with like the big tease that uh, Captain Marbles, the real one, is going to fight Spectre. Uh, we don't really get to see the big fight that the tease. It's just one page made fight. And then the shadow, the shady packed plan is to... Uh, take out Calypso, and then you can come. Then they can try and get Spectre to listen to reason. Uh, uh, now I'm actually going to do something new. I'm actually going to try and fix this story. And you might be thinking, "Oh, what what gives you the right to do that?" But I have a degree, and a module within that was script writing, and another was narrative storytelling. So. I'm going to take this issue and issue one and I'm going to make them a lot less shite. Right, first up, obviously, this six page scene has to go. Uh, it serves no purpose. Uh, the only thing you can take from it is that there is a woman who was in a mental asylum and uh, we get we don't even get her name in this like clip, so it's not said anyway. All we get is the identity, her real identity. She is Atom Man's ex, uh, and considering she contributes nothing else to issue one, this whole six-page scene is pointless. You shouldn't start a crossover event with this. It's basically irrelevant. Uh, what you should start with instead is actually. The flashback from the start of issue two. Uh, this one, uh, straight away, we're introduced to the Spectre and we see him doing his thing, and the narration makes it clear that he is going further than he has ever gone before and he's lost his moral compass and then we are introduced to calypso and we're straight away told it is calypso and we're given an important setup that spectre is going to target magic uh there six pages at the start of issue one starting a crossover effectively setting up both the villain spectre and the plot him targeting magic as well as introducing and teasing uh, Calypso as as his sort of like Lady Macbeth and you can and you can hold her real identity back the Atom Man's expert we get from that you can hold that back as like a mystery to reveal later uh, you could maybe even like obscure her identity here like have her covered in shadows and you can reveal who it is later I mean there is loads of ways to do this then in issue one, we have got Reggae Man here, and these pages I wouldn't actually change. I think they do a pretty solid job of setting them up. But then we get on to the Enchantress. And here, since we have already set up Spectre uh, quite well with the first six pages from number two, and we've explained how he's targeting magic, we don't need to spend as long with Enchantress telling us that. Instead, we use this space to set up Enchantress and her nature as a succubus. Uh, we still, we could still have this payoff here with the Spectre fighting, fighting the old wizard man thing, and we could still see he kills seven hundred sorcerers. I guess it's not, it's not that much of a problem now that we're not seeing it because we did get to see Spectre doing evil stuff with this scene. Uh, personally though, uh, personally, since this fight with the wizard man, since it's so minor and not really explained, probably best change the cover. Uh, and in that case, I would suggest maybe using the cover to issue two. Because while this isn't a good one for a crossover, it is good for setting up the, the villain. And that is what this issue should have done uh or maybe something like with this maybe maybe something like this image here with spectre and uh actually i think that is on yeah spectre and 
Spectre fighting and then Reggae Man and Enchantress just like make them bigger. Or maybe, maybe, right? Maybe, right? You could have like Spectre at the background and then have like all the magic characters, like all the ones that you see in the in the bar here, in the bar here. Just have all them characters like at the forefront with Spectre at the background and uh, like. Because this is like meant to be a crossover. And I look at stuff like Christmas on Infinite Earths. And stuff like that. They put a whole bunch of characters on the first issue cover. So you could say, oh look. Look, Animal Man is in it. I might get this. And then uh, then we would get this. And I'd mostly leave this this the same as well. But uh, when we reach the end of this bar scene here. What we really need. What we really need. Is a good image. A good like splash page image. Or at least a decent sized panel showing the characters that make up the shady pack. Because we end this and other than Detective Chimp and uh, Enchantress and Reggae Man. We don't know which of these characters are actually agreeing to go and fight the Spectre. Uh, then we have this, the single page. Leave this as it is. It's good. It's an effective hook to get people back for the next issue using Captain Marbles, the real one, as like the big tease at the end. There, issue number one is fixed. Now on to issue number two. The cover, first up, change it, should be an image of the Shadow Pact, the Shady Pact, assembled. Uh, since we've got the first six pages free now, because this is in issue one, what I would do is I would maybe bring forward the bit where he is fighting the Phantom Stranger. Uh, we had a reference to this in issue one with the little mouse. So, and now we can get the payoff to that. It's a big bombastic action scene to start an issue. And it also brings it closer to the setup that was in issue one. So, uh, so it's better off than later in the issue. And since the this this is only two pages, we have four pages free to go into better detail about Doctor Fate and Xanadu, because they are meant to be. They're even referred to in this comic as like the big, powerful magic users. The idea you're telling a story about magic, but at the same time you're kind of ignoring or just like tossing out Doctor Fate and Xanadu here. It doesn't make sense. You're diminishing their stature, and also. If you do this scene a bit more, you might be able to get rid of those tarot cards and make the comic a lot better. Then, uh, then we go back. First, I would ditch this whole weird thing that probably confused people. Uh, this whole scene, actually, uh, ditch it. It's really only there to establish the characters that are members of the Shady Pack and who is there. But with, with the splash page and last issue and... The new cover for this one, uh, you don't really need this. Instead, use instead start open up with the sh shady pack. This scene here, and use all those pages you've saved to instead uh, use a space to set up night sides and nightman and blue demon because they are not set up at all. We don't know anything about them, like the powers, the real names, and in setting them up, it doesn't come out of nowhere when you have stuff like. Uh, when you have stuff like uh, Detective Chimp asking, uh, oh, Nightsides, can you teleport me? Uh, and then later on when we have this scene with the Enchantress, uh, and she, it doesn't come out of the blue because we set her up last issue as a succubus. Uh, and even better, in setting her up last issue in the scene with Reggae Man, that gives Reggae Man even greater reason to misunderstand the situation and mistakenly think that they're close and romantically interested in each other now. He's not kissing her just because she asked him to kill her. And then, here is the big problem with this issue though. Captain Marbles, the real one. By this point, Captain Marbles, the real one, he hasn't been set up at all. He was a hook at the end of issue one, and this is the payoff. It was okay for him just to be in the one page of the first issue because that was a teaser. Here, he is again only in one page of the comic. We need a lot more of him here. And considering the big fight between Captain Marbles, the real one, and Spectre, it was teased so prominently at the end of the last issue. Not showing it, or and not showing most of it, it is a fucking disgrace. Now, 
I know Captain Marvels, he is featured in the Justice Society of Superheroes tie-in issues. And this scene is probably extrapolated in that. But this, this, Day of Vegans, this is the story. This is the big event. You ended the first issue telling people to come back because Captain Marvels, the real one, was going to get involved in the story. We should see at least the start of this fight. We should have a big cool confrontation. Oh, this is my dog Wendell. I got him because I thought he would help with the YouTube views. Because like, when Diversity and Comics got a dog, people started watching his, his videos and liking them. But I'm hoping this one will pay off. Uh, right, we... We, we should start off with the big cool confrontation between Captain Marvels, the real one, and Spectre. And like in that, in that confrontation, you can subtly set up Captain Marvels, the real one, a bit. Do you want to say hello? No, he's gone again. Uh, then we can just start the fight and have the Shady Pack show up and keep the rest as is, I guess. But uh, we definitely shouldn't have have this whole fight reduced to a single page with two issues into the crossover and Captain Marbles, the real one, he has been in two pages. Uh, he's meant to be a central character. As I said, it was fine for one page in the first issue, but this is meant to be the payoff to that and it's quite frankly not payoff. Anyway, there, I have fixed it. The narrator of the story it's, it reads much better now. I still don't particularly like it. I don't like Spectre basically being reduced to evil and naive enough to fall prey to Calypso, Lady Maclypso. But that's another problem, really. You can have stories like that which are told well. Uh, this one, though, it just isn't told well. Uh, this one, I'm going to... I'm going to rate my version of Day of Vegans 7 thumbs up. But I'm going to rate the actual version as low as I can. It's got fucking tarot cards in it. Uh, so I've got to give it 7 thumbs up. 